the, the execution level not as crisp as it has been, despite the fact that they've gained 160 yards to this point in the game. Yeah, it's been key plays. Uh, the fumble for a turnover on the first drive, the fumble which put them behind the sticks, setting up a third and 12 on the second drive, and then this drive is kind of sputtered. They've eventually made their way, obviously, inside the red zone to the 14-yard line. They're set up pretty well with second down, but even here they're they're off schedule a little bit uh, with second second goal from the 14. All right, first play of quarter number two with BYU down a three zip, and the Cougars are set up at the 14-yard line. Zach Wilson, eight for ten for a buck thirty so far, and he'll be setting up in gun. An empty backfield. So BYU will go empty on second and goal from the 14. I like this look against uh, of empty. UTSA has been bringing a lot of pressure, which is why you've been calling. Zach has been rolling out to his right and his left. They're not content to let him stay in the pocket. They're making Zach feel uncomfortable, which the three previous opponents have not been able to do. He's handled it moderately well. Um, the pressure combined with the tight man coverage down the field, though, has uh, posed a challenge for BYU in the early goings. Trips to the right, the wide side for Wilson, awaits the shotgun snap, receives a low snap at his knees, pulls it up and fires to the left, and Dax Mill makes the catch. They say he got a foot down at the 10. He was immediately forced out, but they'll give him four to third and goal from the 10. The defender there, Charles Wiley, thought he had forced Dax out before a foot got down. The official rules otherwise, but now it's third and goal from the 10. Yeah, Wiley is protesting quite a bit, but there was t- the line, the side judge and the linesman were right there uh, on the play, and it was pretty clear from the replay he got his foot down. All you need is one in college. Second consecutive possession, or a second s- snap of empty. Now they motion Katoa into the backfield with the right hip of Wilson. Zach chest high snap. Inside screen to the left. Gunner makes the catch, trying to shake tacklers loose inside the five. He keeps the legs churning, but he's driven back. It'll be fourth and goal from the five-yard line. Now the question is, does BYU play for points with a field goal or say, no, we're going to make this thing work? And it appears they're going to keep the offense on the field and try to get themselves into the end zone here. I love it is from the four-yard line, fourth and goal. Sorry, Greg, but uh, I love the aggressive nature, and it's still early. If you don't get it here, you can recover from it. And, of course, if you don't, uh, you're setting your uh, opponent up with a 96-yard field to go triple cluster to the right and UTSA will call a defensive timeout as BYU looked at fourth and goal from the four yard line. Timeout. UTSA first of the half. Timeout on the field. So with 13.49 to go until halftime, BYU down 3-0 to UTSA looking at a fourth and goal from the four after this on the new skin BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin BYU Sports Network. BYU fans, did you know you can have your groceries waiting to be picked up or better yet dropped off at your front door? It's all done online at smithsfoodanddrug.com or on their app on your phone. Download the Smiths app and save time. Shop online. Well, BYU has today set a season high in first quarter yards. They had 160, but they also got no points out of all those yards. And now need to make four yards to change that particular stat. BYU's down three zip. With 13.49 to go until halftime and facing a fourth and four from the UTSA four-yard line. UTSA has just taken a defensive timeout from which we are now just emerging. BYU on the year is three for seven on fourth downs. The yardage tally now is 170 to 85. So BYU is exactly doubling up UTSA. Now they try to double up the Roadrunners on the scoreboard by scoring a touchdown on fourth and goal from the four. BYU will flank out Isaac Rex to the wide left, put a triple cluster of receivers to the right with Wilson in the gun, Algier to his left hip. Ball near hash. BYU four yards away from the end zone. The Cougars have two turnovers today, one a fumble and one on downs. This would be a turnover on downs if the Cougars can't make four yards. They're at the four, fourth and goal, and here we go. One minute, 11 seconds into quarter, number two, UTSA three, and BYU zero is our score. There's the clearance to play. And Zach Wilson will await the Joe Tukuafu snap. Zach now turns and looks back and says, are we ready? And the TV guy says, we're ready. And here we go. Zach in the gun. Motions out Algier. Short drop. Pushed out to the right. Zach's now on the run to the far numbers. Lobs it to the back corner. 
Catch is made. Did he get a foot in waiting for the signal? It was it back at the end zone? No signal, no signal. Officials converge. BYU says touchdown. The officials say nothing yet. No signal on a caught ball at the back of the end zone. They just really want to make this touchdown call rough on us, Greg. I mean, it, it happened in the far corner away from the press box, but I thought he got a foot down. Touchdown is the signal. Cougars. Rolling on the field. <laughs> touchdown. By the, by the time they made the call, the replay had been up on the screen. I almost wonder if they looked up at the replay screen to see that, sure enough, his foot did come down in, de- in bounds. So with 13.41 to play in the opening quarter, the call on a delay is a Neil Pau'u touchdown catch. That and was, that was quite the delay. <laughs> yes, it, was, it had us all. There was a big jumble of bodies, and BYU was celebrating. UTSA was lobbying to the refs that, no, it wasn't. And good to see Neil, though, make a play after that uh, first drive fumble uh, where he was trying to make a move in the open field and put the ball on the ground, come back. And that almost, uh, he, the way he elevated and the positioning on the field, that it gave uh, memories of Dwight Clark. Jake Oldroyd not available today, and so it's Justin Smith on the PAT try, and it's up and good. And so BYU's string of PATs continues, and the score is now 7-3, 13-41 to play until halftime. We'll stay right here with us. So give Neil Pau the credit for the catch and his first touchdown of the season, fourth of his BYU career. That was a tough play as Zach Wilson's running to the far sideline and just lobs it to the back right pylon. Pau goes up and makes a catch right at the back of the end zone and then immediately swarmed under and bodies fall upon bodies and then officials gather in a long discussion and that was the slowest touchdown call maybe we've ever seen of ultimately after a talk and some reasoning and maybe a look to the big board the call was touchdown and BYU leads it by a score of seven to three with 1341 to go until halftime and that takes us to our Utah Pork Producers Pigskin Scoring Summary, our first Pigskin Scoring Summary of the game, brought to you by your Utah Pork Producers, providing safe and wholesome pork products to Utah families for over 25 years. Visit utahporkproducers.org. BYU goes 75 yards, 6.14 off the clock, 10-play drive to go in front of the Roadrunners by a score of 7-3. to B.J. Daniels and Brennan Dingle are back to return the kickoff, and Ryan Rico will be handling kickoff duties. So no Jake Oldroyd. He's dealing with uh, a malady that has him out for today. He warmed up but didn't feel good to go, so he doesn't go, and Justin Smith converts the PAT. Ryan Rico, the punter, will handle kickoffs. He kickoffs, kicks off to Dingle and Daniels. That's a wobbler. And did it go out of bounds in the end zone? Yes, for a touchback. It was... Touchback. 25-yard line, first down. Question whether it would go out of bounds before the pylon or after it, but they say after the pylon for a touchback, and it's UTSA football first and 10 on the 25-yard line. Yeah, quick injury update for you, Greg. So um, this defensive series, the Cougars will be without Lorenzo Fawatea. Uh, he was escorted off the field on crutches with a boot on his left foot. Uh, pads are off, helmets off, so he will not return in this game. Thank you, Mitch. Mitchell Jurgens in the Zions Bank end zone for Zions Bank. Banking that helps you. Game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you. Sincere McCormick off the left hip of Frank Harris. And false start on the left guard. That'll be a first and 15 now for UTSA. False start. Number four. Offense. Hmm. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. They say the tight end and the left guard move. They'll credit that false start to the tight end, Leroy Watson. Second, ten, second penalty for UTSA today. 7-3 to three our score. 13-41 to go until halftime. Snap Harris. Hand off McCormick. And he's tea-kettled out at the 23-yard line after a gain of three. Second down and 12 for UTSA. BYU with 194 yards of total offense to UTSA's 88. The score is 7-3 in BYU's favor. And the Roadrunners showing just a little bit of tempo as they're back to the line from the 23-yard line. McCormick stays the tailback. Sincere McCormick. Four carries, 18 yards, a long of eight. And then three of his four games this year, he's had a long of at least 25. Harris 
Awaits the shotgun snap. Trips to the left. Single wide right. Option run to the left. The pitch back to McCormick. And he is rocked and dropped. And Kavika Fonua in his tracks at the 21-yard line. Loss on the play of two. So third down and 14 coming up for UTSA. UTSA's offensive rhythm is really, like you just mentioned, Greg, they're doing tempo, and they hurry up, and they give a dummy count, which has drawn the, it drew the Cougars offsides a couple times early. It's caused a couple false starts for them. But then they stare over at the sideline. It can be really hard to get in a rhythm as a defense, but boy, did Kavika, was he in rhythm on that contact right there with the big tackle. He lined them up, and he tuned them up. Trips to the right on third and long. The pass underneath is complete on the dump to the 20, out to the 22-yard line, but well short of the line to gain. It'll be fourth and long for UTSA. Zachary Franklin on the reception, but not for much. Got just a couple. So fourth and 12, and UTSA will punt it away. Lucas Dean to kick it. And this will be UTSA's first punt of the day. In fact, neither team has punted to this point. It's been uh, miscues and some mistakes and turnovers, but no punts until this moment. The reigning Ray Guy Award punter of the week, Lucas Dean, will boot it away. He's averaging 46 and a half yards on his punts. He'll try out some altitude and see how it suits him. Not terribly deep. It drops into the arms of Dax Milne at the 39-yard line of BYU with a timeout on the field. 11.38 to go until halftime. 11.38 remaining in quarter number two. 7-3 is our score. BYU leading UTSA on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. How about triple overtime? Oklahoma, number 22, Texas, all tied up at 45 apiece in the third overtime. A couple of upsets from earlier today. Number 21, Texas A&M takes down number 4, Florida, 41-38. And Mizzou defeats number 17, LSU, 45-41. Back to Lavelle Edwards Stadium and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thank you, Jason. BYU football is presented by Ken Garf, located on University Parkway in Orem. Ken Garf Honda of Orem is ready to give all of our friends and neighbors a great car buying experience. So come visit our store today. And today, here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, it is BYU 7, UTSA 3, 11.38 to go in quarter number 2. Zach Wilson coming in two today as the only quarterback in BYU history to have racked up back-to-back-to-back games with 200-plus in pass efficiency rating. And he's at 201.7 today. 12 for 14 for 154. A touchdown, no picks. I'll get you 201.7. I remember the one incompletion, Riley, was that uh, short little dump to Carter Wheat that never got to him, kind of a loss of grip. What was the other incompletion? Uh, on the sideline, he got flushed to his left. Gunner Romney, good defensive oh, that's right. play by Pass the cornerback. Yep. 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 Well, it's pretty good when you can remember you know, pretty quickly all of a guy's incompletions on the day. And he only had 11 coming into today on the season. He has two today. And he'll be in the gun, in fact, in pistol with Tyler Algier. It's BYU first and 10 from the Cougars' own 40-yard line after the punt from Lucas Dean moments ago. That was a 38-yard punt is all from Dean. So he's got a good leg but didn't really show it on that first attempt. Now they'll shuffle Algier up to the left hip of Wilson. Blitz threatened from the right. It comes from the right. The dump off to Algier, and, man, he ended up not catching the pass and then having to break up a, maybe a possible interception as the ball sailed over Algiers' hands. He got a finger on it, and Antonio Parks almost came away with a shoestring INT, but then Algier collided with him and knocked the ball away. So it'll go to second and 10 after all that from the 40-yard line of BYU. That's in completion number three for Zach Wilson. UTSA doing a good job uh, with the pressure in Zach's face. Caused him to the throw was a little bit high to Algiers, which he tipped up in the air and always makes you nervous. Six on the line for UTSA defensively. They motion Pau'u. They give middle to Tyler. And Tyler, running between the numbers, between the hash and the numbers left side, shakes off a tackle or two for a gain of nine on second and ten. Good run by Tyler to setting up third down and one. So third down and one. And BYU on third and one this year is three for six. And all of the third down and one attempts have been rush attempts. And BYU has its first third and manageable today. They were third and 13, third and 10, third and 10. So the first and thir- first third down of anything under 10 yards comes right here. So Ibax with Wilson under center, Wake and Algier. Handoff is to the up back, Mason Wake, and he's got the first down. And the pile pushes with Mason leading the way. It'll be a five-yard gain on third down and one. So a third and one converted. And to the 46-yard line of UTSA, that third and one is converted. BYU now two of four on third downs today. 
The chains move. And the clock now moves under 10.40 in quarter number two. BYU 7, UTSA number three. You know, it's tough to please the odds makers when the spreads get so big. And BYU is minus 34 and a half coming in two today. And they currently have a four-point lead early in quarter number two. Ball between the hashes. Joe Tukawafu bends at the knees and gets ready to send a shotgun snap back to Wilson in the gun. Now the pistol with Katoa behind him. A play fake nod to Katoa. A step up in the pocket and a fire as the flags fly. Incomplete intended for Milne to Zach's left, the near sideline. What will the call be here? Sometimes I like defensive holding from where the flag flew, but it lands at the midfield stripe. Here comes the call from Scott Campbell. Holding, number 77. Offense, mm. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. BYU's fourth penalty on the day, and that'll go against the uh, right guard, Chandon Herring. So, this team that was uh, penalty free, very penalty free through three games, has uh, picked up the infraction tally pace here in the last two games. First and 20 now, back at the BYU 44, trips to the right. Zach Wilson gun, single wide left, and he's got Lopini in the backfield off his left hip. A helmet high snap, the handoff to Katoa, gets a full head of steam to the far side, but runs into traffic and then is run down after a minimal gain. So from first and 20, it'll go to second down and 17. Clarence Hicks on the stop for the Roadrunners. UTSA coming in 3-1, BYU 3-0, and ranked 15th nationally. The big game, the next big game, and really uh, it's a big name game as well, is Houston, which looked good in defeating Tulane this week. It'll be BYU at Houston in six nights. Second down... And 16 for BYU. Wilson shotgun. He's got Katoa to his right. Bootleg to the left. And incomplete to the near sideline. So he's having a tough time making connections right now. I mentioned Zach had only two incompletions coming into this series. And he's thrown two on this sequence. Now to third down and 16 for BYU back at the Cougar 48-yard line. Braden Cosper was the intended receiver. It's a completely different approach when you're facing man coverage, which the majority of this drive has been. You have... In versus zone, you're throwing with anticipation and you're throwing into windows. Man, you're putting bodies or you're putting a throw on a guy's body and trying to make a completion that way. It's an adjustment these receivers and Zach are going to have to make. Three receivers, wide side, left side for Wilson, who looks at a third down and 16 from the BYU 48 yard line. 9.26 to go, and the play clock has come down and timeout called. BYU, second and a half, timeout on the field. So a delay in getting that play underway results in a timeout, which we will take with 9.26 to go until halftime. Cougars have a lead of 7-3 over UTSA on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Beating UTSA 7-3, but uh, down in distance, again an issue for BYU. They've had only one manageable third down. They made it. It was a third and one. But their other third downs have been third and 13, third and 10, third and 10, and now third and 16. Yeah, and look, you can't let the defense force you to in to be in one dimensional but right now the play split is 16 pass to 10 rush they're averaging six yard well 5.8 yards per carry um but uh and i don't have this total breakdown but they've been throwing a lot on first and second down they've been running the ball so well one of the ways to get ahead of the sticks and by the way it's been penalties that have set up most of these third and longs greg is get in that run game they've been really good in two tight end run sets get in that and get yourself ahead of the sticks on first and second down so you're not dealing with these third and longs Third and 16 for Zach Wilson and the Cougars. BYU's been off schedule most of the first half, despite gaining a decent number of yards. 212 to UTSA's 87. They need crucial yards now. Trips left, single wide right. Ball far hash the right side. Zach Wilson in shotgun. Algier to his right. UTSA shows just four on the line defensively. Make it five. They're going to bring four, drop one, pitch right to Algier. Algier good head of steam as he takes the option pitch to the far boundary. But on third and 16, he got maybe eight. Fourth down, give him nine. Fourth down and seven. And BYU will punt it away for the first time today. So a conservative call on third down and 16. Zach Wilson has been firing all season. It took the ball out of his hands there and ran Algier on the option to the right. Getting nine, needing 16. So the first punt for BYU now with Ryan Rico kicking it away. Only his fifth punt of the year. 
Yeah, Riley, you mentioned it before in the before the break. This uh, this UTSA team, they're playing great man coverage. So these receivers have to figure out how to get off and create space uh, to create those passing lanes for Zach. No pressure on Rico. Takes it a little off this one, forcing a catch at the six-yard line. Well done. So Sheldon Jones makes the catch of the punt at the six. We'll stay right here with it. UTSA setting up first and ten, but the BYU defense chance now to give the offense the ball back in some good field position if they can keep the UTSA Roadrunners three and out here on this ensuing possession. BYU football is brought to you in part by Edge. We all agree that nobody likes spiders, ants, mice, or frankly any other pests. Well, Edge gets rid of all that. They create a clean, safe, and pest-free environment for you and your family. That's Edge. The scoring edge to BYU, but a narrow one right now. The Cougars who Our top five in the nation in scoring offense held to a single touchdown here in the first half of play. 8.34 to go until halftime, 7-3. At the goal line, Frank Harris awaits the shotgun snap. The handoff to Sincere McCormick, and he's snowed under on his run to the left side. As a pile goes to the ground at the 10, Kyrus Tonga among tacklers in for BYU. Gain of four, second and six for UTSA. Keenan Peely was first in on the tackle. Kyrus helping to finish things off. He's a pretty good finisher when he lands on you. McCormick is the tail to the left tip of Harris in the gun. He's got tight end and two wides to the right. Takes off left and gets to the boundary. Steps out. After a minimal gain, it'll be third and five. That was a gain of one is all. So third down and five. And a chance here for the BYU D to go three and out defensively and get the offense in good field position. Isaiah Kofusi with a force out on the sideline. BYU 7, UTSA 3, 743 to play until halftime. There's a middling distance. You could run McCormick here, but they may be tempted to throw here with Harris in the gun. Single wide left. Tight end and two wides to the right. They will have Harris throw it. He wings it to the near side, and it is caught, but maybe bobbled at the boundary and incomplete. Yep. Didn't quite haul it in cleanly. An incomplete pass. Fourth down. It was intended for Joshua Cephas, and Cephas made a bobbling catch on the boundary, so much so that it was not caught inbounds, and a punt is the outcome. It is a three and out defensively, and the offense will get the ball back in decent field position. So nice job there by Coach Elisa Tuiaki's unit. And waiting in the end zone, five yards deep, is the punter Lucas Dean. First punt, not a good one, 38 yards. Dax Milne, expecting a good punt, awaits back at his 45-yard line. Fourth down, five for UTSA. From south, rather from north to south, left to right. And this one's sky to the far side and out of bounds. Shy of midfield, so BYU should be in UTSA territory to begin this ensuing possession. Another not very deep punt from a good deep punter. And the spot will be the 46 of UTSA. Timeout on the field. So BYU first and 10 at the UTSA 46. Looking to punch one in and put a little more distance between themselves and the road runners. We're taking a break on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU fan StubHub is the easiest way to experience every Cougar game. Check the virtual view, score your seats, and get your tickets delivered instantly. StubHub, the official ticketing partner of BYU Athletics. StubHub, be there. We hope you can use those tickets soon here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. But in the meantime, we play Cougar football and await your return to the venue. BYU playing back to back to back home games in difficult societal circumstances. We're glad the games are getting played. BYU's won all three games it's played this season. Looking to go 4-0 here today and leading UTSA 7-3 with 7-17 to go in the first half of play. BYU's averaged this season 308.7 yards of offense in the first half. And the Cougars are clipping along at 221. Just a little less than uh, half of the quarter remaining here in quarter number two. As we come back in, BYU facing a short field. The 45-yard line of UTSA after a 34-yard punt. So the uh, reigning Ray Guy Award punter of the week has uncorked only a 38 and a 34-yard punt today. So not doing a lot to get field position back for his guys. Can the Cougars take advantage here? First and 10 Cougs at the UTSA 45. Ball at the far hash. Ibax and the handoff to the deep back. Lopini Katoa doesn't get much. Gets a couple between the hashes on that run. Second down, eight for BYU. Clock rolling to 7.08 before halftime. 
That double tight eye formation has been pretty good. They've been running a lot of lead zone. That one right there was an ISO or a lead block, uh, a man base scheme right up the middle. But uh, with with the short field and having gotten yourself off schedule on the previous drives, I think uh, a commitment to the run here would probably be a good thing early on in this drive. Pistol with Algier behind Wilson. The turn of the handoff by Zach to Tyler. Tyler shoots a gap to the left side, gets outside the numbers for a first down and more inside the 30-yard line of UTSA to the 26. It's a 17-yard run for Tyler Algier on second down and eight. That was a wide hole for him to go through and a flag down at the far side of the field. Offside, number nine. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. You hear the wind whipping through the mic of the referee, Scott Campbell. Riley? I was just going to say it's uh, a definite difference when I saw a flag on the line of scrimmage. My assumption, because of the somewhat uh, sputtery or sloppy start, was that it, it might have been holding or another penalty on the Cougs. Good to see it on the defense, but great job by the offensive line creating a hole. You mentioned it was quite the lane for Algiers to run through. Good job, O-line. Good job by Tyler taking advantage. Wilson shotgun, Tyler Algier to his right hip. Zach will look right, throw right, catch made by Milne at the 15, jumps in the air as he's hip-checked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line to the 9. First down and goal for BYU at the 9-yard line of UTSA. UTSA scored first. BYU trailed for the first time this season, down 3-0. BYU scored to make it 7-3, now looking to go up 14-3 with 5.45 to go until halftime. First and goal now from the UTSA 9-yard line. BYU scored his first touchdown. On a pass to Neil Pau'u in the back right corner of the end zone, a pass play that took about 15 seconds to, for the officials to discuss before calling touchdown. Ibacks now, Wake and Algier, Wilson under center, Wheat motioning to the right tackle. The turn and hand off to Tyler. Tyler bouncing it outside the left side and is grabbed around the ankles and dropped for a loss. As Antonio Parks coming up from his safety spot for the loss of two, second and goal from the 11. And again, BYU goes a bit off schedule here. They've had a tough time when they get into scoring territory of just marching it rhythmically. They tend to just have one hiccup every time to push them back a little bit and force them to do more than they intended to. 5.07 to go and an injured roadrunner down on the field. Kevin Nelson, defensive tackle, sits between the 10 and 15-yard line and receiving attention. So it's a brief pause in the action, but no timeout on the field as in breaking away. So we'll stay right here with it. 5.07 to play until halftime. BYU 7 and UTS th- UTSA 3. Cougars now up to 255 yards of total offense here in half number one. BYU gone to the sidelines for a quick huddle, and the officials go, nope, we're ready to play. Let's go. And so BYU right back out into alignment. Second down goal from the 11. The ball now moves from the right hash to the left. So the near hash from our vantage point as BYU goes right to left as we see it and you hear it here in quarter number two. Greg Rubel, Riley Nelson, Mitchell Juergens, your broadcast trio. Pistol formation, Wilson shotgun, Katoa behind him, Milne to the far right, double tight and a wide receiver, Romney left. Zach will pump, little dump off to Katoa, catch at the 10, five into the end zone, he goes. Touchdown, Cougars, Lopini, Katoa. For the fourth time this season, the 18th time in his BYU career, that's a touchdown catch, his second touchdown reception of the year, and BYU goes up 13-3 with a PAT pending. Great play-action screen. Uh, You mentioned the little dump-off, which I was following the ball along with you, Greg, and then I look in front of him, and he's got three linemen setting up a whole wall and and an escort into the end zone. Good play-action screen game there for the touchdown. No Jake Oldroyd today. UTSA was offside on the PAT, which is up and good. So that penalty will be declined, and BYU will go up 14-3 on the PAT from Justin Smith. Referee Campbell will tell us what went on there, but it was offside UTSA. Offside, number 95, defense. That penalty is declined. Try is good. BYU 14 and UTSA 3 with 4.44 to play until halftime. And again, Justin Smith has replaced... Jake Oldroyd today. Oldroyd not able to go. Justin Smith out of Sandy, Utah. The six foot, 290 pound freshman, number 97 for the Cougars today, whistles through his second PAT. Let's get to the Utah Pork Producers Pigskin Scoring Summary brought to you by your Utah Pork Producers. With every Cougar point scored this season, your Utah Pork Producers and Smithfield Foods will donate 300 servings of delicious protein 
to the local Utah Food Bank. Visit utahporkproducers.org. BYU's scoring drive is a short one after the short punt from Lucas Dean. BYU goes 45 yards, over 233 off the clock. Five plays it took, an 11-yard touchdown pass. Wilson to Katoa is the scoring play. Zach Wilson on the day with a passer rating of... uh, Well, they gave the last touchdown pass to Katoa and not receiving from Wilson, so we'll make that adjustment here statistically in a moment. That was a mistake on the uh, stat monitor. They gave Katoa the touchdown pass. Which I'm sure he'd take, Greg. Well, yeah, the, the, the official scorers had it as a touchdown pass from Katoa to Wilson. It was Wilson to Katoa. Either way, it's 14-3. to BYU leading it as we get closer to halftime. Kickoff results in a touchback, and UTSA will begin first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Lopini's had so many where he's carried the ball across the end zone. I'm sure he'd love the chance to throw the ball to <laughs> someone and, and, and do that. But, might uh, come at some point. 18 career touchdowns. That guy is a magnet for sure. Shotgun for Harris. Sincere McCormick vacates left as Harris looks right and then throws left in the flat to McCormick, makes the catch at the boundary, and is escorted out by Loa, by uh, Kavika Fonua for a gain of three to the 28-yard line. Second down, eight. Uh, second seven, beg your pardon. Second and seven for UTSA with a 4.28 to go. The clock rolling as the step out came outside of the final two minutes. Shotgun to Harris. A play fake nod into the belly and a throw to the far boundary. Caught at the sideline inbounds for a first down by Zachary Franklin to the 42-yard line. Catch for a first down. So 41 the spot. First and 10, and the Roadrunners adopt tempo now. Back to the line. First and 10, Harris in the gun. Handoff, McCormick. Runs it right. And can't get past Kavika Fonua. Fonua for a loss on the play from first and 10 to second and 11 and almost 12. He ran it right, and Fonua was right with him for the sure tackle and the TFL. Back to the 39 of UTSA. Kavika has been all over the field. He's really playing with great energy, and he's been a real sure sure tackler. Harris Gunn. Thigh-high snap. And just sails it into the UTSA team area to the right. Incomplete on second down and 12. Third down and 12. And so BYU with a chance here. If the defense does its job, Riley, the Cougars can add to the scoring tally before halftime. Yeah, and one thing I'm noticing with Harris, the UTSA quarterback, he is way, he is strikingly more confident on the run throwing outside the pocket than throwing from the pocket. Most of his throws from the pocket have been errant like that last uh, throw out of bounds. He just sailed it into the UTSA bench. So they're looking like a pistol. Now they've shifted to shotgun and right hip for McCormick, who now vacates to empty with strength left. Looking middle is Harris, and again just throws it up with it. Again, a wobbler that almost picked off by Troy Warner. It falls incomplete. That's the second pass today where he simply lost his grip or otherwise just thrown a ball up for grabs that Warner dove to and almost got to for a second pick of the day. It'll be an incompletion, and BYU gets the ball back. Yeah, those are easy ones when they're just floating out there for you, and they don't hurt your hands, or you're not worried about jamming (laughs) a finger because they just float down like a feather into it. At least that one he had an excuse as Brackenell Bakri uh, hit him as he threw it and uh, was right in his lap. So 0 for 4 are the Roadrunners on third downs now, and that one Dean got into. That's the best punt of the day, and it'll land inside the BYU 10 inside the 5, roll to the 2 and out of bounds there. So... Finally, Dean on Corks one, and Milne wasn't either ready for the length or where it went directionally because he wasn't in a position to return it. So it went away from Milne to the far boundary, and now BYU, if it is to score, will have to do so on a 98-yard field. We'll stay here with 3.15 to go until halftime. That last punt is a reason why, you know, his... You mentioned the Ray Guy Award, and uh, as that was low and directional, the the low part of it makes it extremely hard for Milne to get over and get underneath it to catch it, and then the direction of it obviously set up the Cougars to be pinned on their own two-yard line. His first two punts went 38 and 34, and that one, 61. So now BYU's back at its two-yard line. Wilson is under center, a turn and a hand off to Tyler, and Tyler just tries to get through that first hole and does so for a gain of 8, 9, and maybe almost 10 for Tyler. Give him 10 plus another for 11 and move the sticks on the first 
play of the series. BYU Such, down to three minutes. I apologize, Greg, but I'm so impressed by how strong his lower half is. There was a good hole created by the offensive line, but he was contacted about two or three yards uh, past the line of scrimmage, but carried defenders for the next eight. Oh, pistol and a wayward snap that Wilson yanks down out of the air. Hands off to Tyler running off tackle left for a gain of six to the 20-yard line. Give him seven to second down and three. Brandon Matters in the tackle. And Zach did a good job to keep that play from blowing up. We quarterbacks like we feel we don't get enough credit for our hands. Zach throws far side, complete to Milne. Milne at the far boundary, makes the catch and moves the sticks with flags. Two flags on the play at the far <laughs> side of the field. That was on a second and three. Completion to Milne, but let's wait to see what uh, either or both flags are about. I'm counting them up now, Greg. It looks like four three. different, yeah, four yeah, different four flags. flags. I, I think they caught them in substitution, and, and it might be substitutions on both sides, but BYU hurried up into tempo, and I'm pretty sure UTSA didn't get that 12th man off the field. But we'll see what the referee has to say. There are fouls by both teams. Illegal substitution, defense, more than 11 players. An eligible man downfield, number 83. Offense, those fouls will offset. Replay, second down. So take away, take away the nice game from Dax Mill. BYU football brought to you by America First, Utah's number one credit union. Join us, and you'll be part of a winning financial team. Go to AmericaFirst.com for details, and go Cougars. So stays back at second and three at the BYU 20-yard line. The offsetting situation. Wilson, gun, Katoa, right, hip. Trips left, and the run is left. Now, oh, it's taken off right by Zach Wilson. So he pulled it away from Katoa. And the quarterback keep on second and three. Not much there. Timeout taken by BYU. If that is, that's their final of the first half, I think, if they called it. Let's see. Third down, two. They gave Zach one yard on that play. Timeout. UTSA. UTSA. Second of the half. Game clock operator, please put two minutes, 11 seconds on the game clock. Thank you. So the Cougars retain that third and final timeout. So Jeff Crime saw something he liked, keeping Zach on the run to the right, but it netted a single yard as all. So now third and two. Those offsetting penalties were certainly the one from BYU, kept that Milne gain from moving the sticks downfield, and it was punitive. The offsetting, because the redo ended up in a one-yard gain is all. Now it's third down and two. And BYU on third downs today is two of five. And checking those third down distances, just one good one to this point. Well, so far, oh, sorry about that, Greg. BYU's third down distances have been 10, 10, 13, 16, and a third and one. This one, a, a nice third and two. Yeah, for the first time, uh, BYU, what, what hasn't, uh, has been kind of surprising is they haven't gone to the tempo yet this uh, so far this game. If BYU can convert here, we will see that high tempo two-minute offense that we haven't seen so far in this game. Mitchell Jurgens in the Zions Bank Den Zone for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you, and Lopini Katoa running it right on third and two, gets five or six or seven, and that's a stick mover for the Cougs who convert and get right back to the line. The Cougars go tempo now with two minutes even to go until halftime. Zach in the gun will boot to his left. Pressure from his behind. Hit as he throws incomplete. He's rocked to the ground, but no flag on the play as he was hit while releasing incomplete to second down and 10. BYU brings the tempo, as Mitch called, and UTSA responds with pressure. Uh, honestly, too many, I, I, in my opinion, too many defenses uh, just default to a base defense whenever the offense goes tempo. I, uh, I think it's a good strategy by UTSA to trigger, whenever BYU hurries to the line, to trigger with some pressure of their own by bringing an extra man and a blitzer. BYU will keep it second and ten. Wilson shotgun. Katoa aligned to his left. A play fake place in the belly and a pull away and a pass to Isaac Rex who's rocked high at the 36-yard line. Gain of 7 on 2nd and 10. He took a hard hit at the end of that play and gets back into the formation on 3rd down and short. 3rd down 3 for BYU. Wilson shotgun. Takes a thigh-high snap. Unloads down the far side. It is incomplete. Into and through the hands of Gunnar Romney. Deep defensive back running with him as Romney's helmet comes off. And he's a little woozy to get up. And I thought he had the catch, but he doesn't come to the ground with it. And BYU will punt it away with 128 to play in the first half. And so a drive that uh, showed some promise. And I thought 
Wilson placed it in there pretty good. Didn't end up in the catch by Gunner. And we hope he's okay as he goes off the field with his helmet off of his head. Ryan Rico will kick it away. BYU will not score. And the first half may end with BYU scoring but 14 points for a team... Averaging around 50. The punt by Rico is caught and no fair catch and spinning out of tackles for a couple of yards as Sheldon Jones. Flag on the far side of the field. And then another flag in late. It might be a minute whenever there's multiple flags. This crew does love to congregate and discuss before announcing the penalty. Just one quick note back on that third down. It it ended up being third and three, Greg, and the decision to throw the ball 40 yards down the field. Granted, he had one-on-one, and as you mentioned, it was a well-placed ball. Um, with how well they were running the ball and how efficient they've been on third and short. Interesting decision to uh, take a shot down the field. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 39, return team. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down, UTSA. So BYU on its third and threes to this point in the season. They'd only thrown one time, didn't complete it. Now now they're 0 for 2 on throws on third and 3. When they run it on third and 3, they were 2 for 4 coming in 2 today. And so BYU is now a, a 40% team on third and 3. And third and 3 should be a down you make more than you don't. And, and, and that, that number has time to pick up over time throughout this season. But that, uh, that's a tough one there. They were running. And again, big... You think about the last third down short, Tyler, or rather a Lopini Katoa big gainer. Yep. And, then, and again, the, the pass was good, but you wouldn't have been surprised if Gunnar hauled it in. Hand off to B.J. Daniels on first and ten. We'll see if UTSA is content just to get to the locker room here. Yeah, and with BYU only having one timeout left, really, uh, if that's UTSA's desire. Although it looks like they did call a timeout. And they changed quarterbacks for that first down play. Timeout, BYU. Frank Harris. Last of the half. Please reset the game clock. One minute, eight seconds. Frank, Har- Frank Harris was replaced by Lowell Narcisse on that first and ten run, and so BYU uses its final timeout. Uh, Lowell Narcisse, as was mentioned in the pregame, runs kind of a Tebow or a Wildcat-type package, so uh, probably bring him in in situations like this where they're just trying to burn the clock down and maybe, you know, if they get lucky, get a big hitter in the run game. So BYU decides to use its final timeout. Of half number one, here's a smart decision. The UCCU 4321 Cashback Rewards Card, which gives you more cash back on the spending you do the most. UCCU, love where you bank. Narcisse, sturdily built, 6'3", 230 pounds for the number two quarterback. All right, Zach Wilson's first half has cooled down a bit from his lofty heights. He's 15 for 21. A buck 89, two touchdowns, no picks. Passer rating of 178.5. Still more than acceptable, but uh, more missed connections today than we've seen in a bit. If he's not careful, Greg, his completion percentage might dip below 70. (laughs) Narcisse on quarterback draw is dropped for a loss. And now we'll truly find out whether UTSA just wants to get to the locker room. It'll go to third down and 13. Brackenell Bakery, the wrap up. And yeah, the uh, Roadrunners will let the play clock run down. Get to fourth down, and there need not be another play after that. So the play clock is under, or the game clock is under 30 now, so the uh, half can essentially end on this play. And they'll take a knee and get to halftime down 11. So 27 seconds on the clock. There's a knee. The clock will expire. This first half is over. So BYU gained very near its yardage average, but not nearly at its scoring average. So off 300 yards, 14 points. So BYU tripled the yardage of UTSA in half number one and leads by 11 at the break. 14 to 3 is our score on 300 yards of offense to 101 for UTSA. So there's the uh, cannon blast to signal the end of the half officially. And as Kalani Sitake makes his way off the field, we expect him to have an initial conversation with the TV folks on his way off the playing surface. And then he'll hook up with our Mitchell Jurgens for an end zone conversation. 
Kalani's team leading, BYU, uh, leading UTSA by a score of uh, 14 to 3. And BYU's led at halftime of all four games this season as the Cougars look to go 4 0 on this year. BYU ranked 15th nationally coming into today's game. And still time to put on some uh, style points in half number two. But uh, some fits and starts in the first half and some self-inflicted situations keeping BYU from adding too much to its uh, scoring tally. Kalani now getting together with Mitchell Jurgens down at field level. Mitchell, down so to you. Much. Hey, Coach. Uh, just up 14-3, a little bit slower start than you've had in the past, but the defense coming up strong, just holding them to three points. What's been the su- uh, success so far that they've had? Yeah, we just can't, you can't stop. Uh, you know, for what we're doing, we're stopping ourselves. Uh, on offense, we're making mistakes. We're getting to penalties. Um, the same way on defense, you know, we got to start playing disciplined football and stop shooting ourselves in the foot. The well, UTSA is a good team, and we can't help them anymore by giving them, you know, by going against the count for us and on offense and then defense giving them yards on, on with, with some of the penalties that we have. But um, overall, I thought the defense was well, responded well. Offensively, we're starting to move the, the ball a little bit more. We just got this, those, those sneaking mistakes that keep getting in the way, whether it's penalties or a big play that they're making on their side. Um, you know, they're bringing a lot of pressure. I think there's opportunities for us to make some plays. Uh, we'll have some opportunities to make, make catches and make some big plays, and looking forward to getting that done second half. Yeah, you mentioned the penalties, uh, the mistakes from the offense. Um, other than that, what do you want to see improve from your offense here in the second half? Yeah, we need to get on the ball and start going. we got to get, get some rhythm going, you know what I mean? And and, uh, and everyone's waiting for somebody else to make the play. They need to do their, their 111th, and we'll be fine. I mean, you know, we're, we're up 14-3. to three. Uh, We haven't played our best half, obviously, and we're looking forward to getting that done in the second half. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, thank you, Mitchell and head coach Kalani Sitake. Let's take a break. We'll have a halftime recap next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.